tell you a little bit about the art of the perfect brew. First, the right tea. The region, scent, and attitude of the given variety depend entirely on the situation and mood of the consumer. Second, the right steeping vessel, whether this be electric, porcelain, or imaginary, is up to the discretion of the brewer. Invest in a teapot with the necessary capacity. Only six ounces is sufficient for a single serving, but you always want to be ready for company. Third, hot water. Must reach 100 degrees Celsius and sit for three to five minutes, giving the tea aficionado ample time to steep the loose leaf in the warm fluid. Tea bags are for plebeians. Fourth, deheating of the specimen. Too hot and valuable taste buds are destroyed. Contemplation of the moral imperative for tax evasion recommended. Ah, my cup runneth over. For a moment, your every need is satisfied. Fifth, imbibement. Slow, sensual, delicate sips are suggested. The warmth of the tea shocks your cold interior. Your bliss ceases. For a second, you realize the crippling emptiness that consumes you. Sixth, satisfaction. Only acquired through the interaction of two minds with a sharp intellect. But your enlightened learnings have no ear. Your seemingly eternal solitude makes you ponder whether you exist only as words on a page that will never be read. Perhaps this satisfaction presents itself through the discussion of agrarian aesthetics with your friend of equal weight and charm. You met at the cultured cup on Omega Road. Her first words to you were, culture is not your friend. To an unseasoned behaviorist, these words might seem condescending, but you know these are the words of the mushroom man himself. Perhaps she dislikes pungent smells, excessive jewelry, and people with fake Go accents. The stars. She dabbles with amateur animal photography. Before you met her, her life was stimulating, but not passionate. She appreciates your sense of humor. She enjoys writing short stories on the weekends and listening to minimalist music on rainy Thursday afternoons. She's struggling to take care of her racist great uncle who has self-diagnosed cancer, which she claims requires 24-7 attention. Or perhaps there's another mind fit to share your pot of tea. Maybe she studies at a prestigious college abroad, getting a fancy degree in ancient culinary history. She likes writing quotes on fogged up windows. Maybe she's your best friend's roommate and you've been waiting to talk to her until you finally perfect your garum dish. Maybe you thought one mind was enough to thrive in this world, until you face your debilitating sense of solitude and want to enrich your life through external relationships. And maybe once you allowed one person into your life, you cherished that relationship and wanted more. Perhaps she might say, Oh, I die, Horatio. The potent poison quite all crows my spirit. I cannot live to hear the news from England, but I do prophesy the election lights on Fortune Pro. You wonder why your friend was so generous as to introduce you. She said that helping you made her feel less bad about herself. And your new tea time companion, you come to learn, was climbing out of a depressive hole of her own when you met. You realize that the two women in your life are not characters in your story, but rather, you're a character in their narrative. Maybe you thought you were all you needed, and you could learn everything on your own. Maybe you were wrong. Seven, clean materials and return to original storing places. 